My name is Scott Garcia. I am the president and founder of Premier Estate and Income Planning. We are a, a firm here in St. Louis that really offers a lot for the pre-retiree or the retiree person, okay? And we're gonna go through that tonight. Also, uh, you guys all got a, a really neat invitation that you must have seen something on that invitation that you said, boy, that's interesting. I wanna know more about that. So we're gonna do our best to make sure you guys get a lot of good information tonight, okay? The neat thing about what we do is the information I'm gonna cover is not really readily available. I mean, most of the time, if you want to have this information, you got to set up an appointment with an attorney, possibly, and pay money to get this information. So we're going to go through this tonight. You'll get a lot of good information. You'll have some aha moments where you say, oh, I didn't know that. And uh, the neat thing is about that is we have a lot of solutions. When I bring up something that might be a problem, you might think, I didn't know that. That's, that's interesting, or I'm worried about that. We do have solutions for every problem we bring up, OK? So I'm going to start my company, Premier Estate and Income Planning. I hope this will work. There you go. All right, good. Uh, my name is Scott Garcia. I talked about that. Let's see, I'm going to stand over here so I can turn my head. How about that? Okay. I'm a St. Louis native, been in the business for, this is my 32nd year in the financial services industry, have over 1,000 clients. And when I was 18 years old, I had a baseball scholarship. Everything was going great, and my back started hurting. And I said, you know what? That back hurts. Maybe I threw my arm out, so I went for about a week, and it still hurt. And about a week later, I, I couldn't breathe real well. And my roommate was walking on my back every night trying to loosen my back. And on a Friday, I said, you know what, I might want to go get this checked out. So I went to the free clinic in Columbia, and the doctor must have been new because he came out and his eyes were about this big. And he said, Scott, did you ever been told you had a heart murmur? I said, no. He goes, well, you have a softball-sized softball -sized tumor on your chest. You've got about three weeks to live. I suggest you go back to St. Louis, okay? so." I know the value of having the proper planning done, because I was 18 years old. You're going to find out tonight that if I was 18 years old and my mom didn't have the proper documentation and I would have been in a coma, she couldn't have made any decisions for me at all. Okay, so some of you had children and grandchildren over 18, right? That is a potential problem, so we're going to talk about that tonight. But it happened to me and thank goodness it worked out. Uh, Jennifer Cermak is our attorney. Our firm is not just made up of me. That's good for you guys. We have a whole team. We have a full-time attorney. Jennifer Cermak is our attorney. She's been an attorney for 12 years. Uh, she is from University of Oklahoma City Law School. She got her Juris Doctorate there. She does a lot of work in this area in St. Charles, but she's been doing estate planning. She's done probate cases. She's done federal litigation. She's the uh, helper for the Defender of the Juveniles here in St. Louis and also St. Charles County. So she has a lot of experience. Although she looks pretty darn young, doesn't she? Okay, must be neat being an attorney. They don't have no stress. But uh, she looks young. She's a great gal. You'll get to meet her. We also have, oh, by the way, too, as you see, I don't know if you can see that down there, but the last point was Jennifer is a black belt in Taekwondo, national champion. So whatever she says her rates are, you just got to say, yeah, that's okay, Jen. Okay? I don't argue with her uh, very much, okay? So anyway, no, she's a nice girl. We also have Andrew Victor on our team. Andrew Victor is a graduate of Harvard University, uh, 1993, graduated from Harvard University. What he does for us is people will come and say, you know, I'm going to retire, or I am retired. What's the best way for me to get income? Because what happens is most of you have a 401k or have accumulated money, but you've been in the accumulation process through a 401k, through companies like Edward Jones and Vanguard and uh, Fidelity and all these companies. Those are accumulation companies. They, they do a great job. But once you're retired, what you really need to do is go to an income planning specialist to make sure you're getting the income the best way possible. Andrew shows people how to retire with very little taxes and sometimes tax-free. Okay, let me give you an analogy. Anybody in the room still go to a pediatrician? No. You, are, you do when you're young, right? But as you graduate, you go to a regular doctor, okay? What we're going to find out tonight as we go through this, if you stay in accumulation and you're taking money out of your accounts and the market corrects, it could be devastating to your portfolio. Now, the thing you have to realize is you guys are all sitting back saying, well, everything's okay, Scott. Really, it's okay. Well, yeah, the market's been up for 10 years. I hope everything's okay. But if we go through another 2008 and you're taking money out of your accounts, you could be in big trouble five, six, seven years down the road. We're going to talk about that tonight, okay? But Andrew's a great guy, you get to meet him. Uh, he's a Harvard graduate, 20 years experience in the financial services industry, specialized with tax efficient planning, uh, wealth transfer, and he also consults attorneys and business succession ideas, so very, very well versed in what we want him to do. 
Now, a couple things. Get ready to learn. Anybody in the room? We're in a library. It's pretty cool. We're going to learn something, right? OK, we're going to go through the information, what we're going to learn. First of all, what we're going to learn is what happens if there's no legacy plan in, in, in place, meaning, what if you've worked all your life, you've accumulated money, you have a house, you have a 401k, uh, you got some savings, you got other things, you got a boat and a motorcycle and an RV and a lake house, and you die and you don't have your proper paperwork, meaning you don't have no estate plan. Well, we're going to find out what happens. And a lot of you will be concerned about what happens if you don't have it properly set up. We're going to talk about that tonight. Six every, we're going to go through, it's actually seven, we're going to go through seven everyday situations that have already occurred in St. Louis today that could be devastating to you guys. Now these aren't seven things that happen once in a while. These seven things have already happened today and they're going to happen tomorrow. And it could happen to you and me. So I'm going to prepare you for all these things, okay? How to write your ultimate love note to your family. How do you do that? Well, the way you do that is you make sure that if you are sick, you have somebody in charge of your decisions. And if you die, everything, everything flows to who you want to flow to, how you want to flow, and you don't get the state of Missouri in your business. Because I can tell you right now, the vast majority of people will have the state of Missouri in their business called probate. Okay, we're gonna talk about that, how some strategies on how to maybe avoid that. How the new tax laws can change you, can affect you. New tax bill, correct? How's it affect you? Well, some of you have probably met with your accountants already, but we can show you some ideas, maybe how we can benefit, you can benefit by the new, new tax laws. Remember this, 2023, tax rates are probably going up again. So if we're gonna do any tax-free planning, now's the time. You have an opportunity now to do things at the lower tax rates than if you wait, you might not like the results, okay? How your IRA can do more than one thing. Anybody in the room have an IRA? Okay, I know by experience, 32 years in the business, about 90% of the time the IRA, either you're under age 70 and a half, so the IRA is just accumulating, that's all it does, or you're over 70 and a half and you gotta take money out, and you're taking money out. But I'm gonna show you how your IRA can do three things, not just one, not just provide income, taxable income, but do three things for you, okay? And we're gonna do this in four hours, is that pretty good? Hello, we're gonna do this in four hours. Look at her. One hour. Yeah, one hour. We're doing one hour, okay? How to develop a tax-free income. Let me say that again. How to develop a tax-free income. Some of you have never heard that concept before. Some of you don't believe it. How can I get a tax-free income? The reason is, if you're with accumulation companies, I love the companies, they're great. My girlfriend's a stockbroker. They're great. Fidelity, Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, they're all great companies. They are accumulation companies. They will not show you how to have a tax-free income. So don't think, well, nobody ever showed me it's not valid. It's totally valid. But if you're still in accumulation, if nobody shows you how to distribute your money tax-free, you'll never know, okay? If you want to buy a Ford, you don't go to a Chevy dealer, do you? Because they're going to show you a Chevy, right? So to get some of this information, you have to go to an income planning specialist, not just an accumulation company. Those companies are great for accumulation, but as far as distribution and passing money to your family, it might not be the best for you. We're gonna talk about that tonight. How to potentially lower or eliminate the taxes you pay on your Social Security. Anybody in the room get a Social Security check? Social Security was never deemed to be taxable, did you know that? You probably knew that. In 1935 it came out. There was no tax uh, rule in Social Security. In 1983 they changed the law, they said, hey, we need some money. If you're retired and you have a pretty good pension, you got some income coming in off interest, and you get a Social Security check, if all that equals X, you got to pay tax on up to 50% of your Social Security. That was 1983. 1993, they said, you know what? That worked. Nobody really complained too much. We've been doing it for 10 years. 10 years later, if your income from pensions and your interest and your IRA, if your income is X plus, now you got to pay tax on up to 85% of your Social Security. And that's the situation we're in right now. And Sheldon, my, my buddy in the back of the room who checked you in, can tell you about 70% of all people pay tax on their Social Security, okay? About 30% of the time, we can totally eliminate it. But again, you will not get that information from an accumulation company, okay? So three things why if you want distribution, you might want to consider talking to us is because we can show you those strategies. But you might not get the information anywhere else. Okay, how to protect your nest egg and participate in the gains of the market with no risk at all. Is there a way I can put my money somewhere where when the market goes down, I keep all of my money, but when it goes up, I get a percentage of the gain? And the answer is yes. And we're gonna show you that tonight, okay, in about an hour. All this is in an hour. Pretty good, isn't it? I gotta talk fast, don't I? Okay, so uh, let's go to the next slide. 
checklist. Everybody got a green sheet? If you're a couple, you got a green sheet. If you're a single person, you got a green sheet. This is very important to us, please. Uh, who likes to pay more taxes than they need to? Anybody? Nobody. I don't either. So please fill out the green sheet, okay? Because when the IRS comes to me at the end of the year and says, Scott, did you really have people at the library? That, yeah, I did, I really did. Well, what's their names? I need to prove that I really had you guys here. And there, you guys were here. So please fill this out, top sheet. We're not gonna call you, we're not gonna sell the information, but please fill it out so I can write this expense of the mailing off, and then I don't gotta pay too many taxes. So I can keep doing seminars and educating people. Fair enough, is that okay? And then uh, uh, in the middle, Kind of neat. Schedule your time for a free consultation. If you guys want to, at the end, you can come, come in for a free consultation, hour long, and that's for you guys to answer your, to get your questions answered and see if any of the ideas I showed you would be a valid thing for you to have. Maybe not, but those only one way to find out, a free consultation. We also do free healthcare power of attorneys. The average cost for a healthcare power of attorney is $250. We do them absolutely free because you're here tonight. So everybody got a free gift. Okay, pretty cool, okay? And then if you wanna come see us, or you want us to come see you, you check down here, you like us to come to your home, which is no problem. I like cookies, so that's okay. If you wanna come to the office, our office is number two city place in Creve Corps. There's directions in your packet. If you set an appointment, if you set an appointment tonight, make sure you get a purple or yellow packet. That's got all the information in there. Have cookies, yeah. If the gentleman wants cookies, if you come in, I'll get you some cookies. That's the kind of guy I am, okay? So just tell me what kind, all right? So just put down what day and what time, and we'll try to fit you in, okay? Then on the back, there's 14 questions I'm gonna ask you guys tonight, we're gonna go through. If any of these things are important or a concern, just put a yes there, so when you come in, I know kinda, well, this person has yes four times, I kinda know how to uh, get that appointment ready. Save you guys some time, okay, fair enough? Good so far, everybody's good? And the other part is, uh, and I'll get to it in a second, 14 questions. Everybody's got a note sheet too? In case I say something important, you got a note sheet. Okay, everybody should have one of these. If you have a question, we can't answer any questions tonight because if I do that, if I answer one, I gotta answer four, and if I answer four, I gotta answer seven, and you guys will be here till eight o'clock and you won't like me very much. Okay, so if you have a question, write those down so we can answer them in the interview. Okay, fair enough? Good, we'll move on. Please put your phones on silent. We talked about that. Everybody know where the restrooms are if you have to go to the restroom? You make a left right here, out the door, the first corridor, make a left, the bathrooms are right in the corner over here. Pro, real close. Restroom talked about that. And then please write your questions on the handout sheet. Let's move on. I want to start out tonight with a story. Uh, this story is true. I'm going to embellish it a little bit, but it's true. Okay, there was a farmer. There he is, named Jed. 89 years old. Pretty good shape. Worked his whole life. Very, very successful farmer. Give you an idea how successful he was. There's his property. All that land is his. All the way back to the mountains. He had hundreds of thousands of acres of land. Very, very wealthy person. And his concern was this, uh, that was his daughter, Ellie Mae. Jed the farmer, Ellie Mae the daughter, pretty interesting, okay? Very creative, I mean, it took me hours to come up with this stuff. Okay, so he was concerned though, because his wife had passed away, he had no brothers and sisters, he had one daughter, and his concern was, what the heck am I gonna do if I die? How is Ellie Mae gonna take care of all this property? What's gonna happen? So his concern was real, and he, he said, what can I do? So what he did, he did a mailing like I did. Okay, and he invited, 25 of the most eligible bachelors in the surrounding counties that come to his house. He wanted to find out who the most courageous, suitable guy was for his daughter. So he had him out to the house and they had a great time and they had dinner, they drank, they, they, had, they danced, they had a great time. And at midnight, the farmer invited these 25 guys out to his pool and he made them stand in line right there on the one edge of the pool. Now this is an Olympic sized swimming pool and they all stood there and the farmer said the following. He said, guys, I know you had a good time. I'm glad you did, but I, ha I have a purpose. I wanted to find out who was the most courageous guy, most suitable guy that could possibly marry my daughter. He goes, for the first guy, the first guy who can make it across this pool, considering it's an Olympic-sized swimming pool, first guy that can make it, considering there's alligators, water moccasins, piranhas in this pool, the first guy that can make it alive, I'll give you one of three wishes. He said, number one, I'll give you $1 million cash right on the spot. Well, the ears perked up. He said, if you don't want that, I'll give you 10,000 acres on my very best land. And the guy started getting excited. He goes, if you don't want either one of those, if you make it alive, I'll give you my beautiful daughter's hand in marriage. Well, the war, and keep in mind, if you marry her, you get everything. Well, the words weren't out of this guy's mouth. And there was a splash at one end of the pool, which was followed by the emergence of the same guy at the other end of the pool. He made it alive unscathed. It was amazing, 4.6 seconds. He set a world record. And the farmer ran over to the guy, he goes, son, that was amazing. I guess you want the $1 million cash. And the guy said, no, sir. 
He said, well, I guess you went to 10,000 acres of my very, very best land. And the guy said, no, sir. He goes, congratulations, son. Welcome to the family. You want to marry my daughter. And the guy said, no, sir. And the farmer was totally complex. He said, son, what is it you want? He said, I want to know the name of that guy who pushed me in a swimming pool. <laughs> okay? Now, that's funny. But the key is we're all going to be pushed in a swimming pool. When I was 18 years old, they pushed me in a swimming pool when they told me I had three weeks to live. You're going to be pushed in a swimming pool, unfortunately. You're going to get a call. Your daughter has been in a car accident. And she's 24, and she's in a coma. And what are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you this. If you don't have the proper documentation, there's not a lot you can do. You're going to call your brother in Idaho who had a heart attack. He needs you to come up there. Without the proper paperwork, there's not a lot you can do. So keep that in mind. It's a funny story, but let's make sure you're prepared when you're pushing a swimming pool. Make sense? Everybody wants to be prepared, right? Correct? OK, so let's do that. How do we do that? How are different than other firms? Let's go through that. We have a three-pronged approach. I talked about to Andrew and the attorney. A lot of times you guys go to your financial guy. That's great. But there might not be an attorney in the office. You go to get your taxes done. There might not be a financial guy. The neat thing about it, Jennifer, Andrew, and I all work together. That mean, what that means is if she gives you legal advice to sell something, Andrew can tell her the tax ramifications. If I want to invest some of your money somewhere, Andrew can tell me what's going to do tax wise. So we all work together to make sure we're all in unison. So everybody's working together. And it usually has a pretty good outcome because three people are working together. Now, you don't have to use all three of us. You can, use, you can just do our legal part. But I want you to know we're different in the fact that you can get all three services under one roof. Most of our clients really like that. It's a one stop shop. OK? We offer the free consultation. I talked about that. Internet, internet based option on the trust services. We have an option on the trust services. Now, we do traditional trust, but we also have an internet option which puts the client in total control. We'll talk to you about that when you come to the office. It's an awesome program. And it, we have an exclusive. We're the only place in this country or in Missouri that you can get that. Our office is the only place you can get that. It doesn't exist anywhere else. We also have a, we also have a uh, partnership with Trust Bank. Uh, a lot of people in this room cannot get trust services from a bank. OK? The bank my girlfriend works at, if, if I said the name, you guys would know the bank. I called them Tuesday. I said, can I get trust services? They said, yes. Do you have $500,000? I said, yes, I do. With my 401k, the savings, yes, I do. Well, no, 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 no. It's got to be $500,000 in one account. I said, so you mean if I have $400,000 in CDs, $400,000 in my broker's account, $400,000 in my savings, can I get trust services? No, you can't. So a lot of you cannot get trust services. The neat thing with our program is we're one of the few firms that have a corporate trustee, trust bank out of only Illinois. Why is that important? We'll tell you in the office. It's too much to go into right now. But you guys can all get trust services by being a part of our organization, OK? And then trust bank, uh, we talked about that a little bit. They're a 106-year-old bank, FDIC insured. They're a federal fiduciary. That's very important to you. I'll, we'll explain that, why that's so important in the office. And they are rated uh, five-star by Bauer, which is a rating company for our trust. Whoops, I just screwed that up. OK, also, we use Nevada trust laws. Why would we do that? Well, we also have Missouri trust laws, but we primarily use Nevada trust laws. Why would we do that? Why would you use Nevada trust laws? Well, here's why. Here's the ranking of trust laws. I know you can't see it in the back. You might not be able to see it here, but uh, right here, here's Missouri. Missouri is sixth in the country in trust laws. Then we have Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, South Dakota, Nevada. Nevada has the number one trust laws in the country. That's a benefit to you guys. It has more protection for you guys. That's why we use Nevada trust laws. Even though you're a resident of Missouri, you can get Nevada trust laws. Just like if you have a business, you can get a, uh, incorporated in South Dakota or Wyoming. My LLC is in Wyoming. Why? They have the best protection for an LLC. So we'll educate you on that in the office. But we use Nevada trust laws. They're number one in the country. OK? Also have an article, Eight Reasons Why Nevada is a Leading Trust Situs. I can give that article to you when you come in the office. It'll tell you exactly why we use Nevada trust laws. Why, how can we help you? How can we do that? Why are we here? Number one, most questions, the biggest question I get in the office is what's better, a will or a trust? If I have a will, do I need a trust? If I have a trust, do I need a will? Well, actually, you probably need both. OK, and we're going to talk about that tonight. OK, just having a will is probably not going to be good. So you probably need to have both. Number two, financial strategies, growth and protection. Can you grow your money and have it protected? The answer to that question is yes. Our clients do it every day, and they have no chance of losing any money. Keep that in mind. No chance of losing any money. Tax planning strategies, talk about Social Security taxation. How can you avoid it? How can you lower it? We can possibly do that for you. And then tax free retirement income. We have clients, guys, that have $60,000, $70,000 a year coming in, and they're paying absolutely no taxes at all, and they don't pay tax on their Social Security. Powerful statement. 
but we have clients like that, okay? And then also retirement strategies, not outliving your money. Anybody at AARP Magazine? Anybody? April 2015, AARP, I'm old enough to get AARP Magazine. I know that's a shame, isn't it? I'm old enough though. I get AARP Magazine. April 2015, they had an article, top five concerns of retirees. Number two was dying. Guess what number one was? Outliving your money, okay? Question I have is this. What strategies do you guys have in place right now to guarantee you'll never run out of money? That's what we specialize in, making sure you can never run out of money. That's what we do because we're income planning specialists. We're not the accumulation guy who when the market goes down and you're taking money out, your account could go to zero. And we're gonna talk about that tonight. I think it's like slide 52, okay? So why do we exist? Why are we here? Let's go through that. The need for estate planning is vast. I commend all you guys for being here. I mean, we did a 5,000 piece mailing and there's about 60 of you in the room. So I commend you guys for being here. That's the first step, finding out more. This article is pretty neat. And I'll show you this in the office if you want me to give, I'll give you a copy. First of all, anybody have an idea how many people in the country have a will percentage wise? Anybody want to blurt out anything? Okay, you guys are good students. Okay, let me tell you, all right? 40% of all people in the country have a will. What we're gonna find out is a will alone guarantees probate on almost every occasion. Okay, let me say that again. A will alone in almost every situation will guarantee you probate. Some people think if I have a will, I'm not gonna to go to probate. Totally untrue. You're probably gonna go through probate, okay? So that's number one. Number two, how many in the country have a trust? The answer is 17%. So 17% of all people have an estate plan, a proper estate plan set up. Okay, that's all. So the need is great for what we do, because most people are uneducated and don't understand that and what, how, it goes, how it goes on, what, what goes in, so we're gonna talk about that. The findings of this article, interesting article. Nearly half of the people who responded thought that estate planning is just for the ultra rich. I think that comes from when we were kids, we used to watch TV and there was a lawyer in a big leather chair and the people were sitting around the, the uh, lawyer's chair and he goes, you get 10 million, you get 500,000. That's the TV. Okay, in the state of Missouri, if you have over 40,000 of assets, you are probably gonna go through probate if all you have is a will. 40,000, okay? You're probably gonna go through probate if that's all you have is a will or no will. Okay, so make sure you understand that, that's important. In this article, 25% said they didn't do any estate planning because they don't wanna talk about getting sick or dying with their family, which I totally understand. The good news is you can talk to us about it. And you can do your estate plan and then you can tell your family if you want to. You don't have to, you can if you want. But you can talk to us and we'll, we can set it up for you. You don't have to talk to your family if you don't want to. 49% say their assets aren't worth considering in a estate plan. What's the cutoff? I just said it. At what point do you go to probate in Missouri? 40,000. I would imagine most people in this room have over 40,000 in assets. And if all you have is a will, chances are very good you're going to go through probate. Now, probate is court. Anybody have a goal to put their family through court? Okay, that's what you will do if you don't have the proper documentation in most cases, okay? 61% say a will is enough to meet their estate planning needs. Again, 61% of the people think, well, if I have a will, I'm not gonna go through probate. Total misconception and untrue. If all you have is a will, in most cases, you're gonna go through probate if you have over 40,000 of assets. So most people in the room without a proper estate plan, I would, I would imagine most of you guys are gonna go through probate, which is probably why you're here. Okay, so let's see if we can solve that. 35% experienced someone or a friend or, or somebody they know, a family member, who experienced a lot of arguing when somebody died. Anybody go through that? Somebody died and the family is at each other's throats and arguing and who gets this, how they get this. Anybody go through that? Everybody, Everybody goes through that, right? And your family probably will too without a proper estate plan. Okay, but what we do with the estate plan is we say, okay, where do you want the gun collection to go? Where do you want the jewelry to go? Your wedding dress, the family heirlooms, that's all in the estate plan, so there's no arguing. Because a lot of you probably promised your granddaughter something and also promised your son the same thing or your daughter, so we need to make sure that's all communicated so there's no fighting. And then in the article also, 46% of Americans also say that they really would like to know more about estate planning. I think you guys are all in that group because you're here, and I commend you for being here tonight. Okay, so that article again is available at our office when you come in. Uh, why might we help your family and need an estate? Why might you guys need an estate plan? Here comes the seven scenarios. Again, these have all happened today already and they're gonna happen tomorrow. We just wanna make sure you guys are prepared if it happens to you. First one is this, number one on the back of your sheet. Scenario number one, an older couple or a single person is in a car accident. So you and your spouse are in a car accident tomorrow night. It's 10 o'clock at night, somebody, not your fault, somebody hits you, sideswipes you, you guys are both knocked out, 
and they take you to the hospital, and you're both comatose. And for somehow, some way, the paramedic looks in your wallet, finds your son's or daughter's number, calls them, who calls your other kids, and they all three come up to the hospital and say, how is my mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, where are they at? Well, the administrator is going to say, who are you? Where are the kids of Mr. and Mrs. Jones? Well, how do we know that? The fact is, they don't know that. So your kids have to prove they're your kids. It's 10 o'clock at night on a Friday night. When are they going to talk to the attorney? Monday? Tuesday? You're in the coma for four days now. So they go do that, and they come back to the hospital and say, here's the documentation. We are the kids of Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Well, yeah, but how do we know you're the only kids? The fact of the matter is they don't know you're the only kids. Oh, forgot that one. Back to the attorney. Now you're in the coma seven days. Nobody's made a decision for you yet. Go back to the attorney. Here's a proof we're the only kids. OK, you're the only kids. We know that. Can we see the health care power attorney HIPAA compliant? Well, we don't have that. We're very sorry. We can't give you any information anyway. So you guys are in a coma and nobody can make a decision for you. Just because you don't have the proper paperwork. So estate planning, all it is, is having the proper paperwork. We can help you do that. If this is a concern for you, number one, do you have that duck in a row? If it's a concern, please put yes, I want more information. We did those documents for you guys absolutely free. OK? Understood? Pretty good. Kids can't get the information, that's concern number one. Number two, death of the parent. I guarantee you this, I won't, I'll guarantee it, but I can't prove it. 90% of you guys have your stuff set up this way. I'm gonna go through it real quick. You're the husband, or the wife, your spouse is the primary beneficiary, and your kids are contingent. Sound familiar? You're here, your spouse is here, kids are here. It's all over the place. Could be a problem. Here's why. Gentleman right here, he dies. But so does the wife in the same car accident. That was the primary beneficiary. It's gonna to go to the son, right? No. Son was in a car too, or in the plane. So you got a $500,000 life insurance policy, income tax free, right? Probate free, name beneficiary, but you all three died, the whole thing is going through probate. Your IRA, got an IRA, your wife's a beneficiary, kids are primary, our kids are contingent, you die, you all three die, the whole thing is going through probate. A trust will address this. So it's good that you have it like that, 90% of people do, but you only did about 70% of the job, because that thing can still go through probate if the right situation, or the, really the wrong situation happens. So if you're unsure about this, we can handle this. That's number two, are my beneficiaries correct? All I'm saying to you guys is this, just because your spouse is the primary beneficiary, and your kids are contingent doesn't mean there's not going to be a problem, OK? So keep that in mind. That's, that's scenario number two. If that's a concern, please check yes. We can address that when you come in the office. Number three, joint tenancy. See this all the time. We see this too much. What this means is you and your spouse, or you're single, you and your spouse say, you know what? Sally's such a good daughter. You know, she's 52 years old. She's very responsible, and her kids are grown. She's going to get all our stuff anyway. We're going to put her in the checking account. And we might as well put her on the house, too. What the heck? She's going to get it anyway, and it'll avoid probate, which it will. But guess what? Could be a problem. It's called joint tenancy. You put your kids on your property. What could happen? Well, you put it in the checking account. Parents put the child in the house in the bank account. And Sally's husband walks up to her one day and says, you know what, Sally? You're a great gal. I love you. I love the kids. I just don't want to be married anymore. He's going to get a divorce. His attorney finds out Sally's name's on your stuff. Guess what? You're going to lose half your account. Your soon-to-be ex-son-in-law is going to take half your bank account, half your IRA. Pretty exciting? OK, so let's be careful with joint tenancy. Not a good idea. It could work, but I can sit here for an hour alone and tell you why it probably won't. OK, so joint tenancy, you probably don't want to use that strategy. We see it too many times. Again, a proper estate plan will wipe that out where it can't happen. OK, that's the scenario. Parents could be forced to refinance their house. Uh, what if? Sally, let's say you put Sally on the, on the count and you forget and she starts a flower shop. So she's got a flower shop and a flower shop. You forgot, it was 10 years ago you put her on the account, you forgot, and her flower shop goes bankrupt. Well, in a bankruptcy court, they can take the whole account. They can take your whole account, not half, the whole thing. In a lawsuit, bankruptcy. So again, joint tenancy, probably not good. And we can talk to you about that when you come to the office. We have a solution. Remember, guys, everything I'm bringing up, I'm bringing it up, and I know I can see from the faces. Holy cow, I didn't know that. Uh-oh. The good news is we have the answer at the office. 
We can handle all these problems with a proper estate plan. Bankruptcy talked about that just now. Okay, concern, with that concern, that's number three. Parent is a large, anybody in the room have an IRA? A lot of people raise their hands, large IRA, okay. A lot of people say to me, Scott, I got a $500,000 IRA. No, you don't, no, you don't. The IRS is your partner. They probably own 30 to 40% of that IRA because if it goes lump sum to your daughter, she's gonna pay the tax, okay? So nobody has a $500,000 IRA. You got about a $250,000 IRA or $300,000 IRA. Here's why. Jane and Joan, Jane's the parent. She has a large IRA, she dies. It goes to her daughter, right? Well, the daughter didn't know any different. She just said, you know what? Because Fidelity called and said, you know, your mom had a $500,000 IRA. Do you want the money? Well, I'll take the money. What the heck, why not? Sorry my mom died, but I'll take the money. Well, it's fully taxable to her as income. She might not know that. If you don't have a distribution plan in your trust, she might just take the lump sum, okay? Might be a problem. Here's why. Child receives a lump sum, 200,000 in this example. That's income to her that year on top of her other working income. So let's say she puts her to the 35% tax bracket, she's gonna pay 70,000 in taxes. She only keeps 130,000 because there's no distribution plan. The statistic is what we read, 78% of all inheritances are gone in 18 months because the daughter takes the money and you know, you're young, what do you do with the money? You might spend it. Happens 78% of the time. Okay, no more questions because I can't do that, but if you write them down, I'll handle those, okay? I love you. I'm gonna love your questions, but just write them down and we'll handle them, okay? Thank you. So what we can do, there's something called, has anybody heard the concept IRA beneficiary trust? No? Okay, if you have an IRA, you need to know this concept. IRA beneficiary trust. Now, my experience has been, I'd say half the law firms don't use them in, in Missouri. Why? Can't answer that question, okay? IRA Beneficiary Trust, here's what it does. It does three things. First thing it does is enables you guys to manage the money from the grave. This lady, Joan, passed that 200,000 to her daughter, right? 200,000 in proceeds, tax was 70,000, so Joan kept 130. That's how we see it happen most of the time. With an IRA Beneficiary Trust, Joan could have said, I don't want Jane getting a lump sum. I want her getting a check the rest of her life, or a portion now and then a check the rest of her life. If we use that tool, what happens is her daughter doesn't get 130, she gets $742,000. Anybody think that's better? Okay, that's an IRA beneficiary trust. Enables you guys to manage the money from the grave. But that's a tool we use. We're experts at doing that. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's important. I think it's gonna be number four on your, on your sheet. What if Joan takes that money though, the daughter takes the 130 and there's a lawsuit? You know, you're, you die with 200,000, goes to your daughter, she keeps 130, and does it ever get icy and snowy in December in St. Louis? Every year, doesn't it? So Joan's just driving down the highway, no fault of her, she hits a black ice and she hits a car, and in the car there's a baby, and the car goes down the embankment, and the baby's killed. So they're gonna sue Joan, her daughter, or your daughter, and it really wasn't her fault, but she's got a civil lawsuit. And she loses the case, and she just got your IRA. Bye-bye IRA. Okay, the IRA beneficiary trust would protect that money because right now, if you have an IRA, Malcolm, I cannot sue you for your, for your IRA. You have protections. Anybody here of O.J. Simpson? He lost a civil lawsuit, $14 million. They couldn't get his NFL pension. He's protected just like you guys are. But those same protections aren't passed on to your kids. But the IRA beneficiary trust lets you pass those same protections on to your kids. If you pass an IRA to your kid, it's protecting it's a lawsuit or a divorce. So it lets you manage the money from the grave, protecting it's a lawsuit or divorce for your kids. If you have an IRA, I would strongly suggest you learn more about that. We can explain that to you. IRA beneficiary trust, okay? Again, you pass the IRA to your daughter, she takes 130, and the husband wants a divorce. He's gonna get half of that. There went half of your IRA to your soon-to-be ex-son-in-law. Talk about being mad, would that make you mad? I mean, we're, we're fighting mad almost, right? Okay, there's a way to protect yourself against that. That happen, do divorces happen? I think about 62% of the time they happen. Okay, it happens all the time. So we wanna protect your stuff against that. Protect your family when you pass the money on. IRA beneficiary trust. That's concern number four, okay? IRA beneficiary trust are right here, number five. Here it goes, IRA beneficiary trust enables you to do three things. Manage the money from the grave, protect your children, protect your children from a divorce or a lawsuit. Very important tool. That's number five. If you want more information, check five, okay? Scenario number five, this says conservatorship. This is scary, guys. Let me explain this to you. You will not like, anybody in the room will not like this. 
We had a lady come, call the attorney, said, I need to come see you guys Saturday. And the attorney's going, I don't work Saturday, sorry. She goes, I gotta see you Saturday. This just happened, I gotta see you Saturday. So Jen, the attorney, agreed to meet this person Saturday. We're going, why does she wanna come in on a Saturday? It was a, it was a trust client, it was a client that came in to a seminar, didn't buy a trust, wanted to put it off. I'll wait a couple weeks, we'll wait. Well, she called us, so she comes in on a Saturday, and what had happened is, this lady, Mrs. Simpson, her husband goes, I'm gonna go to Walmart, I'll be back in about an hour. No problem. Well, it's three hours later, Miss Simpson going, where's my husband? It's been three hours, hope everything's okay. Well, four hours pass. Now she's really worried. She gets a call from the security guard at Walmart and says, yeah, are you Mrs. Simpson? Well, yes, I am. Was your husband Joe? Well, yes, he is. Well, you better come get him. He has no idea where he is. He can't find his car, doesn't know what his car keys are. He's, he's lost it. So you can lose capacity at any time. I can, everybody can. Okay, so what happened is now the lady wants her to come in Saturday and have Jennifer write the power of attorney so she can make decisions for him. Legally, what did Jennifer, our attorney, have to do? No. Can't do it. Can't do it. The gentleman lost capacity. Just because you're the spouse doesn't mean he wanted you to make the decisions. So now the wife has to go to probate court and hopefully get guardianship. But what happens, think about this, what happens if your spouse the judge doesn't think your spouse is, is able to make decisions. And they hire somebody else to do it. You've been married for 52 years and your spouse can't make your decision. How would you like to be the healthy spouse and have that control? You talk about being MAD. You talk about your life being in a turmoil. Every day you can't make a decision for your spouse, the person you love for 57 years, and the court's telling you you can't. Guys, that could be handled with a proper estate plan. If you put it off, it could happen. You can't put this stuff off. Would everybody agree in this room, I will die or get sick? Correct? I will die or get sick. Correct? Am I crazy? I think I will. And all of you will too. So you can't put this stuff off. It could happen any time. You're in a car accident and you're brain dead. Same thing. So you can't put this stuff off. A proper estate plan would handle this situation. That's a concern of yours that could ever happen. It could happen all this. Number six. We are at uh, Stacy Pearson. We're gonna talk about her. Stacy Pearson's on our staff also. She helps people who have autistic children or grandchildren or disabled children or grandchildren. So if they're on getting aid, if you die and pass the money, you don't knock them off their benefits. Because what'll happen if you have some of your family has special needs and you leave them money, it can knock them off their benefits, number one. Number two, they gotta pay back all their benefits the last three or five years, depending on the situation. And then they gotta requalify. So all your money that went to the child is gone. So Stacy Pearson has a Universal Guardian Trust. She's on our staff. Anybody in the room know anybody ever spoke to the United Nations? Anybody? Stacy Pearson on our staff has spoken in front of the United Nations twice on this subject. She's an expert at showing you guys how to pass money to your family and still making sure your kids or grandkids will not be knocked off their benefits. She's on our staff also, okay? Proper estate planning can handle all those scenarios. Was anybody in the room the last 15 minutes a little uncomfortable? Anybody? We can participate. Anybody a little uncomfortable? No? Okay. We can handle all that uncomfortability because all those things do happen. Would everybody agree they happened today? They did somewhere and they're going to happen tomorrow. But the good news is if you guys take the step to do a proper estate plan, we can handle all these situations so it's not a problem for your family. Okay? And you. Common questions. What's better, a will or a trust? Probate court. What is it? How does it work? Can it be avoided? Let's go through that. Number one, what is probate court? Probate court comes from a Latin word called prove. When you die, the court's gonna say, what did you owe and what did you own? They don't know. So they gotta keep the probate court case open because everybody can come in and make a claim on your estate. That's what it is, probate. Probate is the granting of the first step of the legal process of administering a deceased person's estate. It resolves all claims while distributing all decedent's person's property under a will. Under a will. A will guarantees probate by itself, okay? Guaranteed, okay? Now, how do we avoid probate or what is probate? Why does it exist? Here's why it exists. Let's say I'm a landscaper. I come to uh, Joe and Marion's house and you guys want a landscaping job done. So I do the landscaping job. It takes me three weeks. I get it all done. It's a Friday. I say, Joe and Marion, you guys want to come look at the job? I, I think I'm done. You guys walk around the house. Scott, you did a great job. You did a great job. Well, here, here's my bill. It's 15 grand. Do you guys want to pay me now or should I send you a bill? You guys say, well, you know, we're getting ready to go to Destin. We'll be gone about a week. Why don't you just mail me the bill? We'll pay you when we get back. No problem. So I leave. Well, I'm in my office three weeks later and I never got paid. 
saying, well, that's, that's weird. And, you know, Joe and Mary, and they always pay me. That's, I don't understand. So four weeks down the road, I say, well, you know what? I'm going to go out there and see if everything's okay. So I knock on your door, and your son comes to the door. I said, yeah, is Joe and Mary in here? I've got some business to take care of. Are they home? Well, you didn't hear? They were killed in a plane crash coming back from Destin. I didn't know that. So as a landscaper, the only way I'm going to get the money is go through probate court because your son's not going to write me a check, right? Everything's in probate. Okay, so probate does serve a purpose. The problem is, remember, not very many people have a trust, so probate courts tend to be clogged up. It's going to take time to go through, and it's going to be a burden for your family. So that's why probate court exists. Problems with probate, number one are fees. Let's go through this. This is off the Missouri website. This will be exciting. Estate size. Let's say your estate is 300000 If you go through probate, there's your fee. If you can't see that in the back, 300000 of estate value, that's your home and everything included, the fee is $17,600 just by not having the proper paperwork. Does everybody in the room have a probate account? Son and daughter, when I die, here's the probate money. It's set aside. Nobody has a probate account. Okay, that money is coming from your estate. It's not going to go to your kids. What if with your house and your IRA and your bank account, your CDs and the stuff in your house, you're at a million? Well, the probate cost is 53,000 bucks just because we didn't have the proper paperwork. Guys, all it is is paper. And we can do it in a week. Done. Out of the situation. Okay, or we can just procrastinate. And sit, but we're all going to get sick and die. You guys already told me that, right? Okay. Where, does the, where do the dollars go? Here's all the places, this is off the Missouri website. These are all the places, there's this thing in here, every sheriff in the county gets like $35 of your money when you go through probate. Boone County, guy gets 35 bucks. It's your choice. Your choice, the money can go that way or you can keep it. How do you keep it? You have a proper estate plan. Where do you want your dollars to go? This is a stupid question, guys, I understand. State of Missouri, is that where you want it to go? Or do you want it to go to your family? If you don't do a proper estate plan, there's a real good chance it's going to go here. If you do a proper estate plan, it's probably going to stay here. Okay? Simple. I mean, it's simple stuff. Number two, second thing bad about probate is delays. St by statute in Missouri, by law, a probate case has to be open minimum six months. So if you died today, August 1st, I know you're going to be in probate till at least March 1st. Minimum March 1st. Okay, why is that bad? Well, there's a six months, freezing of assets for six months. Your assets are frozen, okay? Why is that bad? Anybody in the room have a house payment? Anybody? So you got a house payment, right? They foreclose in three months, right? So you got a house payment, the house payment's 1,200 bucks. You got three kids, one of the kids can pay the house though. So they pay the house for six months. How are, the other, how are, they, how are they gonna get the money back from the other kids? Do you think there'd be a little family tension there? If I'm your brother and I paid $7,200 for the house payment the last six months and you paid nothing, and you want half the house when they die, you think I might have a problem? Okay, you think there's gonna be a problem with your family? See, all this stuff trickles down. If you don't have a proper estate plan, it's gonna be a problem for your kids or your family or your nephew. With a proper estate plan, it won't be a problem. Let's say your house is paid off. If the house is paid off, you still have utility bills, right? Right, so that's a problem. If you die today, you're gonna be in probate till March, what comes due in December? Taxes. Which one of your kids is going to pay the $4,000 tax bill? And the one that does, how are they going to get back? And what if they can't? What if you're in a coma? You have pay on death. I got pay on death on all my accounts. What if you're in a coma? They can't get the money. You're not dead. So a proper estate plan would handle all that situation whether you're dead or you're in a coma. Okay? Number three, public record. Let me ask you a question. You guys were all gracious enough to come here tonight. We're really glad to have you. I'm enjoying this. Hope you guys are too. But if I would have said in an invitation, please bring in all your bank accounts. I want to see your IRA. Bring in your life insurance, the deed to your house. Who would have showed up tonight? Nobody would have showed up. I don't think it would have. Okay. Imagine going through probate. When you die, the probate case is on the internet. And I could be in Arkansas and I can look up your probate estate. I know what you had, I know where it's going, I know the address of your kids where it's going, and I can contest your probate case. So if you're worried about 30 or 40 of us looking at it, what if there's 10,000 people could look at your stuff? That's probate, it's public record. Your probate estate has to be mentioned three times in the newspaper in Missouri. Three times. So if you want to avoid all that, you gotta have the proper paperwork, a proper estate plan, okay? Number four, contestability. 
I said the probate fees are $53,000 on a million dollar case. It could be way more than that because if 100 people can test your estate because you got a million bucks, it could be 100000 because the lawyer's got to fend off those people making the contestability. I can contest your estate and you can contest mine, even though you don't even know me. Now, is it valid? No, but the lawyer's still got to fight it off. If I went $5,000, they might say, Scott, will you take two? I'll take two. Well, it comes out of your estate. Would you take $2,000? That's a pretty good day, isn't it? Right? Okay. So we want to keep this out of public record. Everybody agree with that? Okay. One way to do that, or one of the ways is a proper estate plan. Remember, a will equals probate. What this means is you got a house and a car and a boat and a jet ski and a motorcycle and securities, cash and company stock, and you don't properly plan everything. You've accumulated all the stuff, you just didn't put a bow around it. So what happens is the liquidation costs, attorney's fees, executor fees, accounting fees, it's about 10%. And then the other problem is, because there's really no distribution, because there was nothing in place that said your daughter couldn't take the lump sum, she's going to pay 30% 30, 30 taxes, so you pass your family 60% of what you have. That happens every freaking day. It happens all the time, because they're not of a proper plan, okay? How do we combat that? Here's what we can do. You get a revocable living trust. You still have the same property, house, car, everything. Everything's the same, but because we're going to avoid probate, we avoid that 10%. And because we have a distribution plan, we're going to pass the family as close to 100% as possible because you took care of both. Because we have legal and financial in our office. Okay? Anybody in the room want to pass 100, close to 100% or are you okay with 60? If you're okay with 60, then you probably shouldn't come see us. But if you want to improve that and make sure it's going to be smooth, you need to probably come see us so we can make sure if this makes sense for you. Okay? Non-estate planners. Elvis Presley. Anybody here Elvis? What about Howard Hughes? Michael Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King. Anybody hear these guys? Okay, none of them planned. All wealthy, none of them planned. What happened to Elvis? Elvis lost 73% of his estate to probate fees. Didn't plan, okay? Howard Hughes, 100 people made claims to his estate. The money went to his 22 cousins. It took seven years to settle. Michael Jackson, seven years to settle. Abraham Lincoln was an attorney. No estate plan, okay? It's easy to put off, guys. It's easy to do that. And then Martin Luther King, no trust, no wills. Kids have been fighting for 40, his thing is still being fought. 45 years later, Martin Luther King. Could all been solved with a proper documentation. Don't let this be you guys. If you're that wealthy, maybe it's okay. Okay, but don't let this situation happen to your family. We think there's a better way. Probate's not the problem. Probate serves a purpose. It really does serve a purpose because I'm a landscaper. Probate's a pretty good deal for me. It's a way for me to get my money. If you're a landscaper, you'd agree probably. Okay, so it's a good thing. The thing is, probate's a choice. You guys will choose tonight or next week to just say, you know, we'll get around to it. You know, it's summertime, I gotta go to a fishing trip and I'm gonna play golf. I'll get to it in October. Well, you know what, it's too cold in October to go see the attorney. We'll wait till the weather gets a little better, March. We'll wait till, well, you know what, it's golf season now, I wanna put it off, Cardinals are starting. That's what happens, guys. You put it off and then something bad happens and it's too late to do anything. So you don't wanna do that, okay? We see, Shelly, we ever see that happen? Yeah, it's easy to procrastinate, guys. Lack of education or procrastination what, what hurts most people. Lack of education, procrastination. You guys are all being educated tonight on how this works. The only thing that will hurt you guys, if you say, Scott, on the green sheet, call me. I'll call you next week. No, you won't. I've been doing it too long, 32 years. You don't call. And when I call you, something else is going on. What I'm saying is if you're really serious about this and this bothers you, you need to set the appointment. Because if you don't, it won't happen. I just got, I, if you, you don't believe me, I'll show you a text from a guy today. Just text me tonight. Scott, we still haven't done anything yet. We're talking to other attorneys. Guess what? He ain't gonna do anything. I'll show you the text before you leave. He just texted me tonight. I saw him a month ago. Okay? Question, would you like to avoid probate? If you really wanna do that, guys, we're gonna give you that opportunity to come in the office and see if this will fit for you. Okay? Parties involved in trust. Let's say you set up a trust. Your life will not change at all. You'll still write checks, sell property, buy a motor home, take the kids on vacation, give your grandkids money. Nothing's going to change. It's just that we have the proper paperwork in place, okay? Here's what happens. You guys become the grantor or settler of your estate, okay? That's all. Just a term, grantor or settler. That's you guys. Now, we know you have assets. You have a home. You have a car. You have money. You have a brokerage account. You have all those things. All we do is assign those assets to the trust. That's all we do. It's pretty simple. We can do it about 30 minutes, okay? So that stuff goes in the trust. Proper paperwork. 
Now, your assets are now in the trust. House, car, money, broker's account. When you die, it goes to your beneficiaries. There's no probate court, no delays, no fees, no contestability, no public record. It just goes to your beneficiaries. Smooth. That's all we do. Make sure that stuff goes where you want it to go to. Totally cut off the state of Missouri. If you want to do that, you need to set the appointment because if you don't, stuff will get in your way. It's not that you don't want to. It's not that we're not good at what we do. Life gets in the way. It does. Okay? So it's pretty simple how we do it. Living probate. Anybody want to avoid living probate? 96 people are killed every day in car accidents in our country. 4,100 people have a heart attack in our country every single day. 821 people are admitted to hospitals every day for a diabetic coma. This stuff happens every day. And 19,000 19, people die and have to go to the hospital, uh, die. 19,000 people fall and have to go to the hospital every single day. When this stuff happens, if you don't have the proper health care power of attorney, you might be in huge trouble. What can your family do? I'll tell you what they can do. Not a lot. Not a lot. My son's 18, goes to Mizzou. Columbia, uh, Mizzou, University of Missouri. He's in a car accident tonight. I get a call, I run down there. I'm, I'm Anthony's dad. Really? How do we know that? Prove it. Well, here's a Garcia. Well, that doesn't prove anything. Well, here's a birth certificate. Oh, okay, so you may be ours, Dad. Can I see the power, power of attorney? Oh, I don't have that. Sorry, pal. We don't know if it was his mom. Or his friend's, his girlfriend's mom is a nurse. Maybe it's her. I can't get any information. Okay, so it's important you have your proper paperwork. Would you like to avoid living probate? That's number 10. If you want to make sure somebody's going to make, and make good decisions for you, let's get the proper paperwork intact. We can do that. Long-term care risk. Anybody worried about long-term care? I didn't say who wants to buy long-term care insurance. Nobody wants to do that. I don't want to sell it to you. Who's worried about cost of long-term care? If you're not, you should be. What does it cost to be in a nursing home in this area? Okay, so 7,000, 84 grand, right? And you're gonna be sick for three years. Three times 84,000, 272,000 bucks. And you only got 300,000 in your IRA. That's a huge risk. Or 500,000, it's a huge risk. We don't sell long-term care insurance, guys. What we do is show you how to plan and have the money for it though. Okay, let me show you. Everybody have car insurance? Everybody does? Hopefully, it's by law, you have to have it. Okay, you can't see this. The statistic is 0.0015 that you will need your car insurance this year. 0.0015, but you got car insurance and you need to have car insurance. You should have car insurance. I'm, saying don't, I'm not saying don't have it. I'm just trying to point out the fact of what the chances are using it. Homeowner's insurance, we get calls all the time. My clients, Scott, my homeowner's insurance is ending August 1st. You gotta help me here. I don't sell home, but they'll, they'll die. They have one day without homeowner's insurance. What's the chance of you using your homeowner's insurance? It's 6.78%. That's only really high because all the fires in California probably. Okay, but everybody's got homeowner's insurance and you should have it and I have it too. I'm not saying you shouldn't have it. But long-term care, 78%, that's out of the Medicare book. 78% of all people will need some type of care in a facility at your daughter's house, home health care, whatever, you're gonna need it. It's expensive, so what do you do? Hope is not a strategy. Most people just say, well, we hope it doesn't happen. My wife's gonna take care of me. Yeah, she will for about six months and then she can't pick you up and her health goes bad. It's not reality. So how do we plan against this? What do we do? Let's review. Guys, you guys did a great job, I appreciate it, okay? Very, very astute audience, you guys paid attention, I appreciate it. We went through, every, we went through six everyday situations, it could be tragic. Remember, all those things where you were uncomfortable, we have an answer for. The estate plan can answer every one of those things. Please don't procrastinate, not for me. If you don't do this, and something happens to your family, I'll never know. Do it for you guys, do it for your family. Because we all agree we're gonna get sick and die, so am I. Get your ducks in a row, okay? Number two, explain how to properly prepare for them. We're gonna explain that in the office too, how do you do that? Number three, cover the pitfalls of not planning for your family. Chances are, without a proper estate plan, they're gonna go through probate. Probate is court, guys, and it's no fun. Costly, delays, public record, contestability. Who knows what it'll cost? It all depends. We showed you how to write an ultimate love note for your family. How do you do that? You get a revocable living trust that makes sure everything's taken care of. It's gonna flow just like you want it to go. You guys make the rules. If you don't have that plan, the state of Missouri will probably make the rules for you guys. Who wants to be in control? You guys do, right? Don't you? Okay. We shared three huge benefits of the IRA beneficiary trust. What are they? IRA beneficiary trust. The ability to manage the money from the grave. Number two, protect your kids against a lawsuit. Protect your kids against a divorce. Okay? Not the divorce, just losing the money because of the divorce. Okay? We covered some new tax changes, how it could affect you. We showed you how to have your IRA do a whole lot more. How, it is, how does it do a lot more? Instead of it just sitting there, it could help you 
get tax-free income. It can help provide more money for your care. And you can get more money to your family when you pass away with that, with that plan. We showed you that you could possibly have a tax-free income. Let me say it again. I know you guys are probably thinking, this guy's nuts. You guys could possibly have a tax-free income. But if nobody ever shows you how to do it, you'll never know, right? Never know, okay? And then we showed you how to possibly lower the tax on your Social Security. That's a big one. We're experts at doing that. And we showed you how to protect your nest egg and participate in the gains of the market without taking any risk, that 95% situation. So here's the question. They always say on your deathbed, it won't matter the money you had. You'll think about, that was really neat in high school. Remember we won the state championship? And the first day my baby was born, and my wedding day, and the grandkids, that's what you're going to remember. So the way I want to leave you guys tonight is this. How will you be remembered? It's the most important thing. It's not the money. How are they going to remember you guys? you got a choice. You can be on this side of the room, over here. You put your family through probate court. Because we procrastinate. We know we should have done it. We've been thinking about it a long time. But you know what? We're going on a fishing trip in two weeks. Let's just put it off. Let's do it in July. Let's do it in September. Okay? Don't put it off. S stuff changes. When you're 18, you get told you have three weeks to live. You guys have had that in your family probably too. Stuff happens. Or you made sure your family avoided probate. Boy, mom and dad were so good. They were planners their whole life. They made sure we avoided probate. It went smooth. They were awesome. That's one way. Minimum of 6.6% of cost of your estate. 100, first 100000 Minimum cost to your family. Or you made sure your family had no probate fees. Delay of receiving assets, minimum six months, state of Missouri, minimum. Or you, just made, there was a, you made sure there was a smooth transition. Open your state plan to possible outside untrue claims against your asset. Because it goes through probate, who knows, it's free game. Or you made sure you had ironclad protection of your assets through the trust, which is totally private. You created family stress, or you totally eliminated the family stress. I think everybody in this room wants to be over here on the right-hand side. If you do, Please take advantage of the free consultation. That's the only way we can really help you. Now, a couple things. If you already have a trust, anybody in the room have a trust already? And nobody has a trust? OK, good. Let's just go through this real quick. If you already have a trust, number one, are you sure it's properly funded? 100%. I've never seen a properly funded trust, ever. The reason why is attorneys will write the trust, but they don't, you, most of them will not fund it with you. They'll give you a piece of paper. Here's all you got to do. Call, you got to call the bank. You got to call the broker's company. You got to get the letter, and they tell you how to do it. We do it for you, with you, OK? Funding the trust is not paying for the trust. It's putting your stuff in the trust. We're going to do that for you at no extra cost, OK? Number two. Are you sure your medical power of attorney is HIPAA compliant? The law was changed about three years ago. If your health care power of attorney is over three years old, it's not HIPAA compliant in most cases. What that means is your power of attorney is still valid. They can make decisions for you. They just can't see your medical records. So they can make a decision, but they can't see the x-ray. Well, you probably wouldn't see the x-ray, right? So it's got to be HIPAA compliant. So you want to upgrade that. If you already have a trust, does your trust have an IRA beneficiary trust? I would bet most of yours do not, OK? Most attorneys only use the concept, and that's about eight years old anyway. Are you sure who your successor trustees, your executives are, your health care power of attorney? Have these people changed? Have they changed their name? They get them divorced or married? That's got to be updated. We can do that for you. Do you have a pour over will? What's a pour over will? Some trusts don't have pour over wills. We have a pour over will in our trust. I'll explain to you what that is when you come in. Have you had any family changes? Have you had a divorce, a, mar a marriage, a birth, disability of a family member, inheritance, major purchase of property? All those things will change the dynamic of your trust. So if you've got an older trust, we can talk about that. And then finally, have you made any arrangements uh, how you'd like to be treated if you're in incapacitated? Do you have a living will with a trust? Do you want to re be resuscitated? Do you want a doctor to say, one doctor or two to say you have Alzheimer's? Do you want to be cremated? Do you want an autopsy? All those things need to be updated. Those are all reasons to come see us. If your trust is over two years old, you really need to come see us because we can talk to you about this. And then finally, why should you consider us? Again, three-pronged approach, tax, legal, financial. We personally help you fund your trust. We do free annual reviews. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but think about this yourselves. For those of you who have a trust, when's the last time you saw your attorney? 90% of the time, it'll be, well, when I bought the trust. Okay, That's a transactional person, transaction. That's OK. We're not like that. We want, a, we want a relationship. If you have your documents with us, you're going to come in every year for a free review of your financial and your legal. Every single year. Free. Free. OK? No cost. OK? We do also do pet trusts. Who's going to take care of your dog if you both die? 
It's important. There's a lot. Of, the pet trusts are pretty cool. People pay thirty thousand in California for pet trusts. Okay, ours aren't like that, but it's important. We do pet trust, and then we use Nevada trust laws. Why do we do that? We can use Missouri law. Don't get me wrong. But Nevada trust law is number one in the country, so we provide you the best. If you go to another firm, you might not get Nevada trust laws, which if you want Missouri law, we can do it anyway, okay? And there's flat fee, no surprises, okay? Come see us within six days. We take 60% off our traditional trust fees. That's important, a discount. We are members of the Better Business Bureau. Set up your one-on-one -on -one consultation. See Sheldon. Our Tiffany, our me, with your green sheet, tell us what time you want to come in. We'll call you tomorrow and confirm. Before you leave, if you set an appointment, make sure you get a, either a, ye a yellow packet or a purple packet, because that shows you the address to our office. And it's got a picture of uh, some people in there, Sheldon and uh, me and all that kind of thing. So get a packet. If you set an appointment, get a packet because you know how to get to us and get your questions answered, OK? That's it. I appreciate your time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned a lot. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.